Ah, jumped, jumped in over the graphic. Uh, you've done a wonderful job of pushing back against critical race theory across the country. Well done. Uh, so it's been pretty successful in a lot of ways, but don't get too cocky here because now they've just become more stealth with everything they're doing. Now, instead of calling it critical race theory, you'll hear things like, uh, oh, we're not, we're not teaching critical race theory. We're teaching culturally responsive teaching or uh, even more jargony, culturally responsive pedagogy. There's also this thing called social emotional learning. And like all this stuff, it perhaps has a kernel of truth into it. But when you turn it into gospel, that's when you get in trouble. Robin Steenman is, is uh, uh, chapter chair of Moms for Liberty. Robin, how are you today? I'm good, Mike, how are you? Very good, I'm grateful you're here. Let's, uh, let's define our terms here first. What is social emotional learning? Sounds good. It sounds good, but um, well, it started off possibly with good intentions, but it's teaching your child how to cope with feelings, to manage their emotions. Um, some would say to develop identities, to feel and show empathy. Uh, the question is, is do you want public education teaching your child how to cope with feelings? Hmm. As opposed to what? as opposed to reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know they've, they've failed so bad on that, <laughs> right? And we know how bad they are at that. Uh, I don't know why we think they do a great job on teaching our kids uh, to feel better. Where, where, where should this be done? I would argue in the home. Uh, feelings, feelings are fine to talk about, but what we, you know, in the pursuit of identifying critical race theory in our schools. We uh, really did a deep dive on the elementary curriculum, which is called Wit and Wisdom and the Publisher's Great Minds. And this was the first year that it was adopted in our county. And in our deep dive looking for CRT, we really found that it was end-to-end -end social emotional learning um, with common threads that run through the grades. So social emotional learning, while it, it may have started out with the high intentions of teaching kids to manage their emotions and to interact with each other, what it's morphed into with wit and wisdom is just a really dark, emotional, heavy, heavy curriculum that the kids deal with every day from August to May, K through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And and some of the threads that we've identified um, is, well, suicide ideation in the first, third, fourth, and fifth grade. It just keeps coming up repeatedly. Um, bad white people, bad white people, also oppressive white people. That actually starts in kindergarten and the first, second, and fifth grade. Extreme emotion in all grades. Cannibalism, strangely enough, is in the first, third, and fourth grade. You've got anti-nuclear family in the fourth, first, fourth, and fifth grade. You have anti-America in first through fifth grade, dark imagery in all grades, graphic death in all grades, and age and appropriate topics in all grades. And when I say age and appropriate topics in kindergarten, that includes murder. In the first grade, that's graphic mating and a soft intro to gender fluidity. In the second grade, you have anti-police, anti-fire department, in the third grade, there's it's very heavy on anti-church and anti-tradition. It introduces torture. The fourth grade has uh, a bevy of topics, including rape, murder, adultery, scalping and skinning and stillbirth. And the fifth grade has excessive gore, violence, alcoholism, and promiscuity. So really, you're just you're you're saddling so much on these kids. These are elementary age mm -hmm. children. You know, <laughs> and it's when, day after day of, of beating them yep. with emotions, and, and they're it's all the negative emotions. Yeah, totally. They're barraged, and it's part of attacking the innocence of childhood, which we've talked a lot. I'm looking at the five, six elements of social emotional learning, and you can see again how it started off as you said with good intentions. It's about self awareness, self management, social awareness, relationship skills, like all these really good things about being a full, well rounded person. But you can see also how easy it is for the critical race theorists to hijack that and turn self-awareness into uh, what race are you? And how are you victimized? And how are you oppressed? And how are you the oppressor? You can see they can use that framework so easily. Um, what 
give me go back to the first one you said suicide um how is suicide in in the early grade curriculum suicide is introduced in the first grade through a book called brave irene and it's it's really kind of a depressing story about irene uh pushing through a snowstorm to deliver a dress um and it says even if she could call for help well, there's a there's an image of Irene buried in the snow, and only her hands are sticking out, holding the box with the dress in it. And it says, even if she could call for help, no one would hear her. Why not freeze to death, she thought, and let all these troubles end? Why not? She was already buried. And then, strangely enough, is, is if the students happen to miss that, the teacher's manual instructs them to act out scenes from this book and it, it gives a few options one of them being she gets buried by the snow and almost dies <laughs> so messed up it, it's so so dark and messed up i want to i want to say this last night we'll give you the last word i hate we have to run but um I was, i've talked to people a lot about it. we have i live in a district with good good public schools and i'm like listen guys what that really means is that 60 percent of the kids can read or write at grade level it's what are they learning Right, just because it's good doesn't mean they're teaching what is good, beautiful, and true. They're teaching garbage. They're teaching filth. They're teaching stuff like you've talked about here. Um, and yeah, a couple uh, kids can read and write at grade level it's more than the average, which is abysmally low for the state. But that doesn't mean it's a good school. But I'll give you the last word, Robin. My, for the parents, um, the books don't come home anymore. They don't come home in a backpack. Uh -huh. You can't flip through them when they when they get off the bus. It's all it's online, and you have to match those books up with the teachers' manuals, and those are hard to come by. But it's worth a read. It's worth digging into to find out what your your, your child is being presented because we have kids that are emotionally traumatized by what's been presented to them over and over and over again. And wit and wisdom it really just marinates them in this critical race theory. It marinates them in negative emotions. And it's just a constant drumbeat for the entire school year. So parents be vigilant, look into it, find their books, and um, you can trust, but verify. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.